Hi, Hamish and Andy here with Serious Voices. The next bit you're about to hear contains one of the all-time cock-ups from Hamish Blake. (laughs) What you're about to hear is a young man having a chat to his friend on the radio. He's having a laugh. In the course of this laugh, he accidentally mentions something about the book Twilight, Mm. which turns out to be a major plot point of one of the books. It could be the third or fourth, I don't really know. If, If you're reading any of the Twilight series and you're worried about a spoiler, do not go on to this next bit, but skip three minutes ahead. Enjoy. And uh, you mention the words Twilight, Robert Patterson, or Edward Cullen to any girl, pretty much I'll say under 30, yeah. and you get a screaming, gibbering mess. Yeah, see, I didn't even know. Someone was telling me about Edward Cullen the other day, yeah. and I went, oh, that jazz pianist that came out. <laughs> Yeah, he's good. He can play the piano incredibly quick and astonishingly strongly. <laughs> but How does he move like no one else does? I think that might be a Cullum. Jamie Cullen, wasn't that? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I would say he's maybe enjoying a 1% or 2% rise in popularity through uh, people incorrectly assuming he's the vampire, as you have just done. But, of course, it's the Twilight series of books and now films that have come out. Mm. Twilight, the film, came out last year, uh, which was the first one, and then there's a new one coming out yep. where people... I saw pictures of this in the magazine the other day. They're filming it in Italy, and people are going bananas. Young <laughs> girls are going literally on, like, wigging out pilgrimages to go and just see the filming of this film. They are literally going to Italy, where a lot of people would go to see the Vatican, and they're just going to wig out <laughs> over Edward Cullen. It's basically just like a screaming pilgrimage. Yeah. It, well, they, they're they pretty into it. I, I, I haven't... <laughs> they are. They I really are. Got, I, I don't know why. I, I haven't got into it myself, but... I mean, I, get, I can't get around all the technicalities of, like, who's a werewolf, who's a vampire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do those guys hang out? Yeah. And my girlfriend's read all the books, and she tries to explain to me yeah. Oh, but, you know, and then such and such gets pregnant and it's a half vampire baby. Ugh. And I'm like, oh, that's well, who cares? And she's like, well, no, it starts eating you apart because that's what happens when you have a half vampire baby. And I go, well, no, it's not what happens. It doesn't happen. <laughs> Don't talk about it like it's fact. It doesn't happen. Never has that happened. You never turn on RPA and go, well, tonight Susan's got a half vampire baby in her, so we've got to get it out. So it might happen in the book, but yeah. you can do whatever you want in the book. It's exactly. made up world. Yeah. Anyway, in the middle of this mass hysteria, how's this for just a classic example of people, whoever's marketing the film, going, how do we make as much money, literally, if you'll pardon the pun, suck as much blood from this (laughs) as we can? I was at Borders on the weekend. You can get, as well as all the other merchandise, like the books, the film, whatever, you know, pencil case, you can get an 18-month calendar. What's that for? It's till the end of 2010. So it's like, well, we know we're going to make a dirt load from selling calendars, but can't release one in June because no one's going to buy one to the end of the year. (laughs) No one's going to... We can't sell 2010 calendars early. I know. 18-month calendar. (laughs) May as well cash in right now and jump on it. Brilliant. (laughs) Bloodsuckers. Hamish and Andy. The dark cloud has been cast over this show, in particular one Hamish Blake. Hmm. Um, what he thought was to be just an innocent chat about a film and TV series he knows nothing about Twilight has just, turned to disaster. Well, film and book series. I mean, yeah. that just shows how little we know of it here. <laughs> so film and book series. Um, emails such as this have come in. Hey, Hamish- Hame, you're the man. <laughs> Cheers. Never never saw that one. I deleted that, that. That one could have been bought from yourself. <laughs> H&A, what the... Swear word. I've been reading that stupid trilogy for two weeks now, almost done with the second book, and Hamish goes and ruins it all. You did give away yeah. uh, a serious plot twist. I, not, Where was obviously, the warning? We're not going to say what I said now. No. I didn't realise that this... All I'm doing is repeating some things I've heard my girlfriend squealing about with her friends. Turns out one of those things was something to do with an important bit of Twilight. That email was from a guy. This one was Which is interesting. To Neil. Yeah. You gave away the end of the Twilight series book, yeah. uh, colon. You're and, the best. Uh, and, and a bracket. You're the so best. That's crying. Thanks heaps. Not. Which I quite <laughs> like. Very good to see <laughs> okay. a bit of a not joke come in. Hamish, haven't you learnt yet? Just never mention Twilight. <laughs> that one's coming from Faith. Here's, how's this? From Stephen, mm. uh, Stephen Allpress. Yeah. Give him hell, Hame. <laughs> I'm another victim of the twilight fallacy that's plagued the world of women ages between 15 and 30 years. Every day I have to compete with a sparkling albino who doesn't even exist. 
Please keep blasting Twilight. You're not making this better for yourself, mate. I'm just saying, hey, Steve, go easy, mate. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry. Look, I gave away something from the book, not even knowing that I was giving anything away. I Lauren. thought everyone would know what's... It's like going, oh, there's some magic in the Harry Potter books. Oh, you gave it away, you bastard. Lauren on 131060. It would be fair to say, in hindsight, that what you gave away... It seems I could like see how that would be a great part of the book to be looking forward to, but I Lauren, didn't know it was an important part of the book. How do you feel, Lauren? Oh, I've actually read the books, but my friend's just about to read it. I can't believe Hamish gave away the ending. Don't say what it is. And I didn't even know that was the ending. From what I could tell from what my girlfriend was carrying on about, they go into heaps of stuff after that, don't they? You've given away about, like, the major plot line of the last book. Yeah, but, you know, with security these days and blogs, you're going to probably hear it anyway. I mean, you know the Titanic sinks. It's still a great film. <laughs> Lauren, thank you. Dario, you're in the car with your girlfriend, mate. Yeah, yeah, it was so funny. Um, <laughs> we were, <laughs> I was driving along Parramatta Road, and you, you were, we were just having a laugh, and she was telling me about the story and everything, and then you started talking about a baby. And she oh, don't say anything, Dario, Dario, <laughs> don't say anything. Idiot. Dario, it's yeah, like, yeah. mate, you're dealing with nitroglycerine here, okay? One mistake, we're dead. <laughs> she started putting her fingers over her ears and screaming and hitting me, and everyone thought, Everyone on Paramount are looking over, thinking I was attacking her or something. <laughs> it was so funny. Well, Dario, look, I've learnt my lesson. That cannot be spoken about now because yeah. it's, you know, it's a serious issue and I understand a lot of people are hanging out to read a particular part of the book. You know what the worst part is? At her work, some people told her that, that, there, was, that there could have been a baby, so she was still a bit iffy Dario! about it. Dario! <laughs> get rid of Dario. Cause we're gonna Dario, get we're going to get, get sacked. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, Dario's had to go yeah. for this. There's been security breaches left, right, and centre. This is not why we brought it back up. I understand, Dario. <laughs> Did we dump? No. <laughs> Did, I thought we dumped. I thought we used the button we used for swear words. <laughs> that is how important we view the security of the secrets of Twilight. I've learnt my lesson. I'm getting a lot of hate mail. I was just repeating some facts I had heard my girlfriend get excited about, which I thought to be scientifically incorrect. I feel that you haven't learned your lesson, Am. And by well, what? Dario hasn't. <laughs> yeah, Dario. I'm trying to make an apology here. It's like someone making a statement at the Pentagon and someone waving around secrets behind the camera behind them. Here's my suggestion. Yeah. And is there, I mean, unless you have a suggestion by way that you can apologise for what you've I think a heartfelt apology, which I'm in the middle of giving, I'm very sincerely sorry to all people reading the Twilight books. Mm. Uh, from what I understand, what I said is not that bad. It's still a cracker of a read and you haven't really lost too much uh, enjoyment. Well, Lauren disagreed. She, on 131060, called up and said you've given away the major pro- plot line. Again, yeah. it's one of those things where, you know, it's probably bound to happen, the thing I said. We could all see it coming. Let's be, <laughs> let's be grown ups about you, this. You don't know anything about it. <laughs> On 13, 10, I mean, I, I would, that's how I would have written the book, and I assume that's how a lot of other people saw it going. It was nice to see how it happened. To come to the people's defense and those who like Twilight. It's very defense. awkward talking about something that you can't actually mention. Mm-hmm. It's like, it is like we're going to get a spell cast on us.